and welcome back. In this video, my main purpose is to show you how zeros, when they're not an appropriate value on a survey, if you actually enter a zero when you've got a Likert scale of one to five, how that can impact your statistics. I'll teach you a few other things too about the use of Excel, but that's my bigger purpose in doing this video is to show you how those zeros, if that's an inaccurate value, uh, can affect your statistics. So I have started out with Excel. This is the data from the BIMS survey that I have copied from the Word document. One of the things that I'm going to do just to help me is I'm going to go to the View tab and I want to put my cursor at A2, at cell A2. And there I'm going to freeze the top row. And what this does is that as I page down, that top row will stay stationary. So it, it stays fixed, which helps me so that I can see what each of these columns represents. Now, this number here is showing the respondent number. And there's not a whole lot I'm going to do with that in particular. But uh, I'm going to go down to the bottom here. I think I, what will be better is if I center. I'm going to center these. I think that adds a little bit better. All right. Now, on question one, question one, I forget exactly what it was on the survey, but um, it has the Likert scale responses of one to five, um, question, uh, all the way through question 10. So I'm just going to focus on questions one through 10 at the moment, just to kind of demonstrate what I want to show you here. And uh, under question one, I am going to do an equal sign, and I'm going to start typing average, and I want my average calculation here, and I know that it's from B2 through B79, okay? So when you're putting in this function, this uh, tool within Excel. Uh, you can type the equal sign, start typing um, average, and then the the uh, open parentheses, and then you want the parentheses to be around what area of data you want to be included. And for me, I'm looking at column B, which is question one, and I want it to be from cell B2 to B79. That's where my data is sitting. That's where I want to average uh, the numbers out. So when I hit the enter key for question number one, my average overall is 2.820513. Now I can copy this across by doing the following. I can, if you see that um, my cursor here is a, a white cross, if I put it right there in the corner of the cell, it turns into a black cross. And when it turns into the black cross, I can press the Enter key and bring it across to question 10, which is in K, which is good. All right, so there we go. So that copied them all over. Now I have my averages. Okay. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to copy this sheet into uh, another sheet. Not that you necessarily have to do this. I'm just going to create a copy. Okay. So there's my original data. Here's my copied data. And what I'm going to do is I want to actually make these a static number uh, because I'm actually going to change some of the data up here and take those zeros out and show you the effect of how those zeros affect your calculations. So I want these to actually not calculate again right here. So I'm going to just copy and paste special values so that these are no longer, there's no longer a, a calculation behind it. Okay, they're just numbers. Okay, now what I'm going to do is for questions 1 through 10, and I'll show you this in more detail in another video. I'm going to highlight all of those, all of those data points, and 
going to uh, do a find replace, which I'll go through more detail on this a little bit later. Okay. Now what I want to do, just to show you a comparison. Okay, this was the original average calculation. Okay, here's my original average. Here is my new average with the zeros taken out. So I want to do equals average open parentheses B2 colon B79 that didn't change close parentheses enter and now I'm going to copy that across there we go okay now you can see that well let me do this uh, I'm going to do an equals this minus this so I can see the difference that across. Okay, so you can see on a couple of these questions there were no zero responses so the difference between my previous calculation and my new calculation have no difference whatsoever. However, in looking at these I have some fairly big differences. For instance, this one and this one and this one are pretty large in difference. You're talking a 2.85 versus a 2.74, a 2.9 versus a 2.79. Uh, these are really significant differences when we have taken those zeros out. So when BIMS had the data coder go in and put these values in, to put a zero as a non-response is really not appropriate because it can have a huge impact on your averages and, and other calculations. The mean could be different. Uh, well, mean is the same as average. Your mode could be different. Your median could be different. It really throws all of your statistics off when you have a value that really should not even be represented in your survey. Because when you have a survey that has a Likert scale of one to five, a, uh, an entry for a non-response should be a blank. So I hope this helps to explain why those zeros are really a huge error in the BIM survey and showing you the calculations behind why that's important. If you have any questions, please, of course, you know, ask me in the classroom. But you can also leave messages here on this YouTube channel. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.